August 2nd, I'm not sure if suffering is necessary, because sometimes I can snap out of fear, sadness, or anger just by taking a nice big breath and remembering that I am more than this body and this character, that I am eternal, and these feelings are temporary, and I came through time and time again, each time my mind wiser and my soul intact. In these moments, I trust. But then again, growth is often disguised as pain, discomfort, or suffering. It's almost like my future self feels cramped and confined and is pushing against my edges, wanting to make more room for herself. And that can hurt. Does suffering mean a lack of trust? third. You know, after every single encounter I've had with pain, it transformed me. Through pain, I'm growing enough to welcome more and more of those scared bits of my being under my wing. Many times, pain brought appreciation and gratitude. Pain showed me my boundaries and limitations. It taught me to nurture and hold, and proved me over and over again that I'll always make it to the other side. And by letting the force of birthing new life pass through my body, I've learned that pain is not here to destroy me. It's here to help me navigate, to make me uncomfortable and cross my boundaries, always catching me unready, unprepared, as I am right then and there, stripping me of all the heavy layers that aren't of service anymore. Pain might be the most honest friend I've ever had. And in that sense, it seems quite necessary I guess we're all headed to the same destination, which is drawing different maps and clearing different pathways to lead us there. August 20th. Being a mother is more than I could have ever anticipated. I feel like I've gotten this magical key that opens the door to deeper layers of life. The primitive, ancient aspects of relationships, of my body, of nurturing and caring for another being. The way in which I love, so wild and untamed. 
times I truly feel like a lioness with her cub. And it's so liberating to give myself the permission to follow my instincts, not to question or fabricate this behavior, these feelings. To trust Mother Nature. To trust myself as a mother. To embody the Divine Mother that is in all of us, at the core of all life. August 27th. Life happens in cycles, I feel. Or it's just our mind's habit to point to things and name them, determine them good or bad, happy or sad. So, after a difficult time, you may think, oh, here's my rainbow, the sun has come out. But then the moment is gone, and you're back in the darkness again. Finding beauty in times like that is craftsmanship, it's art. To do that, you have to deconstruct and redefine your idea of beauty, or at least what society has taught us about it. August 31st. Flowers are teaching me so much. Most of them out here are either violet or yellow. Two complementary colors, one cold and one warm, exact opposites of the spectrum. People may prefer one or the other, but they're both equally present in life, just like all other polar opposites. Just like pleasure and pain, abundance and scarcity, harmony and dissonance, love and hate, one does not exist without the other. It's funny. I wouldn't want to give up violet. So why am I trying to resist pain? Some flowers are whole. Some are afraid. And tattered. Some grow in pairs, or threes, or dozens, and some thrive on their own. Some live in places where the sun greets them as soon as it comes out, so they open up to the new day early, while others wait for sunshine's kiss a bit longer, staying closed up and sleeping in late and appreciating all the flowers as they are. I'm learning to appreciate all of my moods and seasons, and not only mine, but those of people around me. I'm learning to accept others with all their quirks and imperfections, and to love them deeper than I ever could have in the past. The world is getting more and more colorful every day. More yellow and more violet. September 1st. I don't like myself when I'm grumpy or resentful or depressed. I don't like myself when I let go and dissociate, when I stop trying to see past a gunk in front of me or inside of me. I like myself when, despite being knocked over again and again, I still try to stand on my tippy toes and gaze over that brick wall and reach for love with both of my arms. When, in times of sadness, I can still talk about light with passion and trust, even though I can't see it. These aspects of me are undeniable and unavoidable. 
just like the flowers. Some violet, with some yellow. And I'm just hoping and hoping hard that my heart's pure and unbound intention continues to guide my actions in the grand scheme of things. I hope I can do better, but also I hope I'm enough, just as I am.